Once there was a time when huge beasts, such as these great dinosaurs, roamed the earth. For almost 150 million years, they were part of the world's life. We know they were here because their bones or fossils have been found on nearly every continent, including North America. A great many of them in the United States. If you draw a line to represent time from the present, back 450 million years into the past, you can say that the fishes began here. Then came the amphibians. The reptiles. The mammals. And the birds. Fishes, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. The dinosaurs began about here 225 million years ago. The last of them were gone about 70 million years before man appeared. Man has lived on Earth a comparatively short time, only about a million years. Some dinosaurs, such as the Brontosaurus, were enormous. They grew to be as long as 70 feet, the size of a house. One could weigh as much as 25 tons the weight of 12 automobiles. Not all dinosaurs were big, however. Here is one, Coelophysis, which was only about eight feet long. He was a meat eater, lightweight for his size, and very fast. The great Brontosaurus was slow, spending much of the time in the water of warm, tropic swamps, probably going on land only to lay its eggs in the dry, sun-drenched sand of the beaches. Like most reptiles, the dinosaurs reproduced by eggs. In the water, the Brontosaurus found support for its huge body and a ready supply of its favorite food, water plants. Unlike warm-blooded mammals, the dinosaurs were not able to keep a constant body temperature. They depended upon the warmth of their surroundings to maintain body heat. dinosaurs had special ways of protecting themselves. The Stegosaurus, a plant eater, had an armor of bony plates that shielded him from his enemies. His spiked tail could be a dangerous weapon. Then there was Tyrannosaurus, a vicious meat eater that grew as long as 50 feet. His huge head was mostly mouth, filled with knife-like teeth. His short forelimbs were of little use to him, and he was so slow that he probably could catch only old or sick animals for food. Triceratops belonged to a group of dinosaurs called horn faces. He was the largest of these, and any other animal would hesitate to attack him. Another horn face, Monoclonius, developed a single horn on his snout, much like the present-day rhinoceros. of the horn faces were plant eaters and all had beaks like parrots.
The trachodons, called duckbills, were from head to tail as long as a large truck and trailer. They too were plant eaters. of their heads, however, differed greatly in shape, making several varieties of duck bills. The flying reptiles seen in the background are pteranodons. They lived at the same time as the duck bills, but are not members of the dinosaur family. centuries went by, the lands and climate in which the dinosaurs lived changed. Those able to adapt to new conditions continued to thrive. Here is the Ankylosaurus, one of the last dinosaur survivors. The horned lizard of today is cold-blooded like the dinosaurs. This South American iguana is also a cold-blooded reptile. The last of the dinosaurs were gone about 70 million years ago. How do we know as much about them as we do, considering the fact that they were gone long before man appeared? There is no agreement as to why they died out. One belief is that they died because the climate changed. Another, that possibly the food supply became inadequate. And still another, that mammals ate the dinosaur eggs. We just don't know. Our world today is still changing. Why would it be helpful for us to know why some animals succeed in surviving as the world changes and others, such as the dinosaurs, do not? <laughs> 